everybody. It's Lynn the Leather Bag Lady. How are you all this evening? Welcome to episode 17 of Shop at the Shed. So <clears throat> I've been asked if this is actually a shed. Uh, yes, it is. There's one wall and there's the other wall. <laughs> so yes, you are actually in my shed. This shed was purchased for my shoes, which now is for my bags. So long time ago, big story on the shed, but we're not going to share that tonight. We're going to get to some bags, but first we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. <clears throat> so if you are regularly with me on a Wednesday and Friday night, welcome. Thank you for coming back. If you are new, a few little housekeeping issues. So all my bags are pre-loved. They are gently used in a lot of cases, um, as was with the Soprano bag on Wednesday, I do not think these bags have been used at all. And uh, this brown one right here, I don't think that's been used either. So I find these bags all over the place. I go provincially. I would love to go internationally, but um, I am looking for bags constantly. So these bags are they're, they're pre-loved, but for the most part, a lot of them have never been used. So that is first and foremost. There are no refunds, returns, or exchanges. However, if there is something majorly wrong, then please connect with me. I do not ever, ever, ever want a customer not to have a five-star experience. So that is uh, just something that I feel very passionately about. But with the price of the bags and the shipping and all that kind of stuff, I just cannot uh, deal with uh, exchanges or refunds, that kind of thing. And speaking of shipping, shipping is not included unless you spend over $100 and then I will cover the shipping for you. So that's just some of the basic, basic. Anything that you see tonight is available on my website, leatherbaglady.com. And if you pop over there, you will see a number of collections. Um, newest Facebook and YouTube bags is where you will find these bags and then the bags that I did on Wednesday. And then every week, whatever is left in that uh, Shop at the Shed episode will get moved over to one of the other um, collections. So let's get started. So let's start with this brown one to start with. So <clears throat> this is a tin and yellow, tin and yellow, however you want to, however you want to pronounce that. There's your tin and yellow right there. Very, very simple chocolate brown shoulder tote. Nice uh, base on it, has some feet, uh, narrower at the bottom than at the top. So all the sizes, more uh, specific pictures are over at leatherbaglady.com, which is, um, did I mention that a minute ago? I, I don't think I did. Leatherbaglady.com is my website and that's where all these bags will be listed. So <clears throat> lots of stuffing used for my bags tonight. So like I said, I don't think this bag has been used at all. There's your Tina Nello branding inside uh, zipper pocket, and you have two slip pockets here. So it is a nylon uh, lining, wipeable, I would say, but it is pristine. So I really, really don't think it has been used. So what you do have here, though, is two different types of grains of leather. So this is a smoother leather on the sides. You can see that. And then you've got more of a kind of pebbled leather. And I mean, these are obviously these are hides. So there's no uniformity to the um you know, the patterning on, it's like a fingerprint. That's what this is. But what you are going to experience, and actually I'll bring the next bag out and we'll do, we'll talk about it with this bag. This is a beautiful little fossil bag. Now, if you can believe it, this is our pound purse tonight. So <clears throat> if you are new to my uh, Shop at the Shed uh, project, 
you will not have heard of the purse pound before. So these bags are in a collection called the purse pound. They are not in the purse pound collection tonight, but that's well the, where they will end up if this beauty does not sell, which I will be very surprised if this one does not sell this evening. These bags are bags that I come across that are either really nice brands, which Fossil is, or they are just too beautiful to throw away because they have a little bit more damage than I normally would have in my stock. So <clears throat> if you've noticed it, there it is. There's a little bit there and you can barely see it, but there's a little bit right here. So this is why I say don't put pens in your purse or be very careful what type of pen you do put in your purse. So I caused this. This bag was absolutely perfect when I got it, but dummy here decided to clean the ink stain on the lining and didn't lift the lining off the leather and it came through, unfortunately. Is it a huge deal? I don't think so, but it definitely is there. And all it is going to make is this bag a brilliant, brilliant value this evening. There's your fossil. Nice. I love this chunky zipper that Fossil has. Oh, I had a little bit of history on Tina Nello. Sorry. Ah, ba 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 ba. Originally owned by Jody and Daryl Cohen, launched in 1989 in New York, and was sold to a Chinese company. So, sorry to jump from that to that, but I will forget because that's the way my brain works. Tina Nello is, um, of late, not the best of quality. And I read a couple of purse forums because I do do my best to get as um, up-to-date, current, factual uh, history pieces as I can. And I've been doing this for 10 years now, kind of unofficially for seven, I would say. And I did a lot of history work back 10 years ago when I first started reselling bags, because that's kind of my little, um, it's my little thing, I guess, uh, you know, there's lots of purse resellers out there. And I guess the number one goal is to make yourself different somehow. And this was not an effort on my part. I love the history of these companies, more so my vintage stuff, which I sell in my Etsy shop which is uh, Leather Bag Lady 1, because somebody else got Leather Bag Lady, and each word is capitalized. So I have about 225, 30 vintage bags over there, and I love researching the companies. But now, I mean, some of these companies are becoming 20, 30, 40 years old. So information changes. So Tina Nello... Um, it has gotten more kind of low end in the last six to eight years, I would say. And that's why Tina Nello, like back in the beginning, was quite a high end brand. And there was a lot of, uh, not a lot, there were a few key celebrities that were carrying Tina Nello bags. And then they sold out. And that's what happened. Same thing's happening with Roots. I don't know what's going on with Fossil. I shared with you a little while ago that they are no longer giving you a key on your fossil bags. It is a circular disc with an interior that spins. I do not understand why that would make sense. As a small business owner who is desperately trying to elevate my, my brand, why would you completely eliminate the brand identity of your stuff. Like it doesn't, there's gotta be, there's gotta be more to it than that. But anyway, back to this bag. So yes, this is, it was heartbreaking when I realized what I had done, but I did do it. So the, the handles are beautiful. No edging. Edging is the devil. 
I hate it. It will ruin a perfectly good bag. You will get a bag. Oh, how smooth that zipper is. I love it. Does have a adjustable detachable strap and it has the canvas underside, which if you are like me and have absolutely barely to zero shoulders, that will help keep uh, a purse on your shoulder. Obviously with a bit of weight in the bag, of course. But I think that strap drop is about 22 inches. So all the measurements, up close pictures, um, maybe not as the description isn't brilliant. I do point out if there's any damage, however, um, over on leatherbaglady.com. So can I take the lining of this bag out? No, I can't. But... There is a lot of pen damage in this bag. So somebody's pen has exploded. It's had a party in their purse, which is why I say, please don't keep per, uh, pens in your bag. So there is a lot of damage inside. There's your fossil branding, some more pen marks, a zipper compartment and two slips. And you have a slip compartment here and a zipper compartment there. So <clears throat> is that is that going to scream at you? I don't think so. But obviously I can't sell that with my regular uh, stock as painful as it is because this is the it color for 2024. A little darker than this. That's the color. But uh, burgundy maroon specifically, my grandmother comes into my head whenever I say that. <laughs> um, but yes, this is the big, big, big color. Articles are being written about it. It is the big color for 2024 and it is one of my favorites. So anyway, this is the pound bag for today. I know it's shocking, but this is the pound bag for today. So let's get this baby out of the way. This is, if you like compartments and structure, this is not the bag for you. But that color is to die for. And look at the accent pieces, the embossed. I mean, it is just fantastic. I added a tassel, which I made. I love tassels. I have big plans for a line of tassel-related purse charms in my free time, you know. But that is something that I am going to do at some point. I was experimenting, and I just had to... Oh, my goodness me, my fingers aren't working. I had to attach that because I just had to. The strap is also that beautiful embossed. There is no glazing on this strap. Love it. And look at how raw that beautiful leather is. It is just, I, I am all about this. But the stuffing is insane. Now, <clears throat> this brand is called Nautilus. And it is a Ontario-based company in, I think it's Northumberland County, Ontario. Husband and wife team. They do mostly um, marine stuff, hence the name Nautilus, N-A-O, no, N-A-U-T-I-L-O-S. And um, what else? Handmade. So everything is handmade and mostly earth colors, which I just love this. Now there is a little bit, there are a few marks on the bottom. You can see all that beautiful suede. I mean, it is, there's your branding, Nautilus. You can go on their website. Their bags are two to $300. This bag is not on uh, their website any longer. Really nice base to it. Just very simple little bit of a contrast stitch. I just really, really like this bag. I used it for a few weeks. I'm going to admit that, but uh, it is just, it's beautiful. And it's very, very soft leather. Just make sure everything, yep, good to go. So that is bag number three. Now bag number four 
is another homemade experience. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to draw your attention to the angles. And then this is a little pocket. This bag is so cool. The color is almost like a Werther's uh, candy. And there is another pocket on the back. Everything is all raw leather. I absolutely love, 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 love raw leather. There's your top. YKK zipper, which is always uh, an expensive choice for hardware, but it is a very, very reliable choice for hardware. A little bit of a different opening, kind of opens in the middle of the section there. Now inside, I hope I'm going to be able to <clears throat> show you properly. So there is a zipper there is a zipper compartment and it's actually backed with leather as well. Most times this in regular uh, kind of, you know, commercial brands, this will be plastic. Nope, not plastic at all. And you can see inside that it's all canvas lined. And then you've got this really funky, it's like a really hard card. I mean, you could fit you could fit a tablet in there and there is like enough. It has a bit of girth to it. That sounds weird, but it does like it's not it's not a, a pocket that's right uh, flush with the back. I can't really show it to you, but so it has some space there where you could. Yeah, see, there's even a seam down there. And then this is the other side. I think this bag is really cool. It is a high sitting uh, crossbody bag. I mean, at a push, it could almost be a unisex. I, I wouldn't be alarmed to see this on a gentleman at all. I don't have a lot of men's bags and I do get a uh, nice gusset on it. I do get requests for men's bags often. But for me to find them, to be able to charge what I charge for purses, not yet. Maybe another 10 years. And lastly, our small item for tonight is a wallet. So you have a little pocket here. Can you guess what who's made this wallet? There's no branding on it with the exception of one spot. Zipper compartment, and then you've got your interior. I think there's 12 card slots, and you have um, a zippered compartment here. No branding until you get here. I don't know if you can see that. Fossil. Can you see it? There's a picture of it over at leatherbaglady.com. I don't think I've ever seen a wallet with so little branding on it, especially from, oh, there you go. Sorry, I didn't even notice that. There's fossil, but there's no fossil on the exterior zipper. Anyway, very different from them, I, I feel. It has two poppers, so if you wanted to kind of load it up on this side, it will... It will give you an extra, you know, if you want to slip your phone in there or something like that. So just something very different. I've never, I haven't seen this little thingy from uh, Fossil before. And like I said, hardly any branding. So that is our small item for tonight. So like I said, hop on over to leatherbaglady.com. Uh, that is where all the bags are. These ones and bags from the previous 16 episodes of Shop at the Shed. Obviously, if it's sold, it's not there. And uh, if it is, then shop away. If you're here just to check out what I got, not a problem. Glad to have you. And until next week, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.